after a hundred years of pride and pleasure, disaster. During the annual tests to check the safety of the structure, two entire spans collapsed. I heard this terrible noise. It, uh, it was a rumbling noise, and I thought it was a, probably a ship had hit the pier end, you know. And I happened to be just looking at the pier all the time. And it just went slowly down. The far end went first, very, very slowly. Oh, it was a terrible sight. <laughs> I just stood, I couldn't do anything, I couldn't move, I just stood there. And then it just all went down in and it all drifted away down the channel. I think that was the worst part, seeing it all drift away. Then began the long fight to save the pier. Engineers came and went, government inspectors inspected. Most shook their heads. It seemed that Clevedon's lovely pier was doomed. But it wasn't quite dead, and despite the gloomy forecasts, some local optimists were determined that their pier should survive. Few thought they'd really succeed. The fundraising could never quite keep pace with the ever-soaring estimates of the amount of money needed for repairs. But the campaigners were determined. I'd say it was worth spending a million pounds to maintain something like this for future generations. If we don't get on with this and get it done, our people who follow us will say they just couldn't care less, they did nothing, and they let this beautiful old pier, they'll see old pictures of it and they'll say, what the devil happened to this? They just let it go. But in the early 70s, not everyone agreed. Well, not really, no. Why not? Because it would cost a lot of money, or what? Well, there's other things that want to in Cleveton, rather than the pier. I think it's a lot of money to spend on something like a pier, when I wonder in some ways, in fact, if more people don't come to Cleveton to see the broken pier than they would if it was a complete pier. Cleveton became a divided town. Eventually, it went to a public inquiry. and the preservationists won the day. A plea had been sent by the poet laureate, Sir John Betjeman, who, unlikely though it may seem, had developed a passion for Clevedon's pier. It could only happen in England. It is itself a beautiful and elegant cast iron structure. It recalls a painting by Turner, or an etching by Whistler or Sickert or even a Japanese print. Without its pier, Clevedon would be a diamond with a flaw.